I'm in the Eastern Cape to meet a woman I've been looking forward to connecting with for a long time. Yunus Mangwane is a community worker with a big story and an even bigger heart. She's faced many hurdles in her life and I'm told can teach us powerful lessons about what happens when we keep our secrets hidden deep inside. I was curious about her life as a young woman, how things started out for her while she was still a teen under her parents' roof. Her first big challenges and the story that brought her from Cape Town where she grew up to this coastal Eden where she now lives, the mistress of her own homestead overlooking the sea. Tell me about growing up in Cape Town, about mom, dad, the home situation. My mom was somebody that was a very strict somebody, but I had a boyfriend. At that age of 16, I fell pregnant. And she was very disappointed in me, very much. She always used to say, I want you to be a nurse. I, I want you to, you know, and I think that I owe my mother still a big apology, even though she's not there anymore. Eunice had her little girl, who died tragically when she was just a toddler. Then years later, she had another daughter, Yuna, who she was forced to bring up on her own. She had a good job, but life alone was not easy. And then I met this guy. His name was Elliot, his surname is Mangwane, he's from the Mlambo clan. It was a love, actually, at first sight. This tall, dark, handsome somebody with moustache. Late in 1979, the two of us got married. It was Elliot who came from Hamburg. His family homestead was here, and Eunice, the city-loving girl with an exciting job as a pre-primary teacher's aide, began to visit the village with him. Then another child came into the couple's life. Elliot's brother had a young daughter called Judy, whom neither he nor his wife were able to take care of at the time. I was given Judy at the age of three months, and I took Judy on. And I brought Judy up, stayed together in Cape Town. And then Elliot turns 60 and Elliot retires. Here Elliot tells me now that, hey, I think my beloved wife, we need to go home. He's had enough now about life in, in cities. But I did not stay in Hamburg because I was still working. And we came to an agreement with it that it's fine. You can go back to Cape Town, work, and then I would come on holidays, which happened like that. As I was coming and going and coming and going in Hamburg, there was then this opening of an art project. And I went down to go and see what was happening down there. An extraordinary altarpiece was being created as part of a poverty alleviation project set up by the local Kaiskama Arts Trust. The art piece spoke of the community's collective and individual responses to HIV and AIDS. It was the brainchild of the local doctor, Carol Baker, whom Eunice was soon to meet. It's a small village, and she saw a strange face, which was me. And she just came across and she said, uh, excuse me, lady, are you from Hamburg? I was then the doctor in the local clinics, which I've been right through since 2001, paid by the government. That was at the beginning when I was just becoming aware of how serious the AIDS epidemic was going to be with us. In those clinics, nobody, none of the nursing staff knew anything about HIV. It was, it was, nobody was talking about it. And yet we were diagnosing people with HIV. It was at a very bad time for South Africa because the government was still denying the existence of the AIDS virus. And that could be felt in every clinic because everywhere everyone was uncertain. The thought that we didn't have treatment, I can't go back in my head to how terrible that was to actually know someone was ill and, and know you could do nothing. Meanwhile, Eunice was still living in Cape Town. Alongside her day job at a creche, she began working as an HIV counsellor through her church in Guguletu and became acutely aware of the ravages of the pandemic. I was volunteering 
at a clinic that was not too far from my house. She was the only person then I knew anywhere here in the Eastern Cape who knew anything about HIV and AIDS and AIDS prevention. And she immediately said to me, oh, you also know about HIV and AIDS? I said, well, I wouldn't say that I know, but I know what I know. And she said to me, I've got a problem at clinics. I can't really communicate with my patients because they only speak closer. Something needed to be done, but I didn't know how, I, I didn't really know how to start. I, I couldn't speak the language. I, I didn't have, I wasn't able to go around doing awareness programs and things. She said, wouldn't you mind joining with me? I said, joining, joining to do what? Then we could, could go around at the clinics and whilst I'm busy maybe with a patient, then you would be doing some education in the passages. There are so many people that are dying. But Eunice, I haven't got a way of telling them. The more that I'm telling them about testing and so on, to them it's something that's very strange. The thing that I did is say, if I can find you the same income you would earn in Cape Town, how much do you need? to be able to stay in Hamburg and work. Then I thought, sure, should I take this chance? And I'm telling you, I went back to Cape Town. I just decided. And Judy and Yuna stayed in Cape Town when you came here? Yes. And I thought to myself, they were safe and sound. I'm going to take this chance. And I was just now focusing on the people that were dying. And so a year after they first met, Eunice, a woman whose life was inextricably bound with the city, gave it all up and went to work with Carol in Hamburg.